Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. During this short application exercise, we're going to build a functional circuit on the motor controls trainer board we've been slowly building upon by wiring up the alarm circuit we introduced in the alarm circuit lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, this exercise operates under the presumption you have watched the preceding lectures detailing the progressive construction of the motor controls trainer board. Recall the alarm circuit as implemented in the above reference lecture used a control relay and a float switch held in the activated state to sound both an audible and visible alarm if fluid in a tank ever fell below the reset value of the float switch. An operator could silence the audible alarm using a momentary push button. However, the visible alarm remained asserted until the float switch was again activated into its set condition. To make this exercise compatible with the lab environment, we'll subtly modify our circuit as follows. First, the normally closed float switch being held open will be swapped out for a normally closed maintained contact selector switch held in the open position. This removes the necessity of having a tank full of water in an electronics lab. Always a bad idea. The maintained contact selector switch is essentially a simulated float switch. When the selector switch is activated, the level in the tank is fine. When the selector switch is returned to the deactivated position, the tank is empty. Second, the audible buzzer will be replaced with another LED with a different color than the one you're using as the visible indicator. This rids the lab of all the noise, noise, noise. This will be greatly appreciated by all. Before we begin, let me remind you, I am not an electrician and you cannot use anything in this or any other lecture as professional electrical advice. Follow the rules. Follow the code. It's there for a reason. To protect people and property from hazards arising from the use of electricity. Some of the material and techniques you may see in this lecture may not be utilized for a permanent approved installation, but is for demonstration purposes only. This content has been developed for edification only. While reasonable care has been exercised with respect to its accuracy, I assume no responsibility for errors, omissions, or suitability for any application or misapplication of its contents. Let us begin. First, we need to assemble the necessary components. We've already built the base motor controls trainer board. The base state consists of a circuit breaker and control transformer. Next, we'll need a control relay. We'll be making use of an octal base 120 volt AC control relay. The control relay has two coil terminals, A1 and A2, and two single pole double throw transfer contacts. Test the control relay and contacts and install it in an eight pin base. Orient yourself to the control relay terminals, both when it is removed and when it is inserted in the base. Now we need to install some switches and indicators in one of the push button enclosures. Let's first install a selector switch, our simulated float switch. This is a three position maintained contact selector switch with two red normally closed contact blocks on the top and two green normally open contact blocks at the bottom. We'll only be making use of one of the normally closed contact box for this particular circuit. The selector switch actuator goes on one side of the enclosure top and the contact blocks go on the other. Tighten to the manufacturer's recommended torque specifications. If you break the plastic top, you've tightened it too much. Casually hand the screwdriver and broken top off to your lab partner and then call your lab instructor over and point out the cracked top. Surely your lab partner deserves whatever bad thing happens. Now fill in the enclosure top with the rest of the necessary components. Install a red momentary contact push button with a mechanically interlocked normally closed and normally open contact block next door. This will be our red silence push button. Next, install a green 120 volt AC rated pilot lamp. This will be our visible indicator that remains illuminated until our simulated tank is refilled. Finally, install a yellow 120 volt AC rated pilot lamp. This will be our simulated audible buzzer that turns on when the simulated tank runs dry and turns off when we hit the silence push button. Orient yourself to the contacts as viewed from this upside down and exposed perspective. Flip the enclosure top over and seat it in the enclosure bottom to make sure everything fits. Orient yourself to the contacts as viewed from this right side up and concealed perspective. Stay organized and don't wire up the wrong contact. 
maintain contact three position selector switch, a simulated float switch, the red silence push button, green visual alarm, yellow simulated audible alarm. All right, we've got all the parts in one place. All we need to do is wire it up and fire it up. First, let's make our job easy by inserting terminal and wire numbers on our ladder logic diagram using the skills we established in the ladder logic documentation lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. By all means, pause the lecture and take your best shot. If you numbered the terminals and wires correctly, your ladder logic diagram should look like this. Note wire one is the left hand vertical upright and wire two is the right hand vertical upright. There are a number of ways to start wiring up a circuit, but they're all garbage compared to the method I'm about to show you. Seriously, do what I say and I'll make your job easy. I always wire a circuit left to right, top to bottom, rung by rung. I never move down a rung until the rung above is completely wired. This saves you the necessity of backtracking and second guessing previous connections. For example, rung one has wire one coming from the control transformer X1 terminal going into the one one terminal of the normally closed selector switch being held open. Wire three comes out of the one two terminal of the normally closed selector switch being held open and goes to several places. Ignore the other places. Only concern yourself with rung one. Wire three goes into the two three terminal of the normally open silence push button. Wire four comes out of the two four terminal of the normally open silence push button and into the A1 terminal of the control relay. Wire two comes out of the A2 terminal of the control relay and goes back to the control transformer grounded X2 side. Rung one and rung one only is done. We can now move on to rung two. See if you can walk yourself through the remaining three rungs using this method. By all means, pause the lecture and do so. Ask yourself where the wire of interest comes from and where it goes to in that rung and that rung only. Continue in this fashion left to right. Only when you land at the grounded X2 side of the control transformer is that rung complete and you are allowed to move down to the next rung. This saves you a lot of second guessing and backtracking and ensures a completed functional product at the end. Start establishing good work practices now. Quick hint, wire numbers are best thought of as nodes. You'll note wire three is better thought of as a pooled connection and only convenience dictates which terminal is physically employed to the best advantage. You cannot make this decision until you're actually physically wiring up a real circuit. All right, with your mental tour complete, let's begin wiring up the circuit. See if your initial assumptions match how I wire this up. Start by making sure the system is safe to work on. Open the circuit breaker, unplug the motor controls trainer board, lock out the plug, and tag it out. Let's start by wiring rung one. Wire one comes out of the control transformer X1 terminal. Note I'm using the terminal block to make my life easier. Wire one goes into the one one terminal of the normally closed selector switch being held open. Wire three comes out of the one two terminal of the normally closed selector switch being held open. Only concerning myself with rung one destinations, wire three goes into the two three terminal of the red silence push button. Note I'm using one of the green normally open set of contacts. Wire four comes out of the two four terminal of the normally open silence push button. Wire four goes into the A1 terminal of the control relay base. Wire two comes out of the A2 terminal of the control relay base. Wire two goes back to the control transformer grounded X2 side. Note I'm using the terminal block to make my life easy. Rung one and rung one only is done. We can now move on to rung two. Rung two starts with wire three. Given wire three is better thought of as a node, we have two options available and only convenience directs our choice. I could start from the one two terminal of the normally closed selector switch being held open or the two three terminal of the normally open silence push button. I'm choosing to start at the two three terminal of the normally open silence push button. Wire three comes out of the two three terminal of the normally open silence push button. Wire three goes into the one one common terminal of the control relay base. Wire four comes out of the one four normally open terminal of the control relay. Where does wire four go? I've got two choices, either the two four terminal 
of the normally open silence push button or the A1 terminal of the control relay. It doesn't matter. They're both the same pooled connection offered by wire 4. I'm going to choose the A1 terminal since it's a lot closer than the push button. Wire 4 goes into the A1 terminal of the control relay base. Rung 2 is done. Let's move on to rung 3. I'm going to start rung 3 using the 1-2 terminal of the normally closed selector switch being held open. I could just as easily have used the 2-3 terminal of the normally open silence push button, but I landed two wire 3s there already. Again, reality dictates your choice as much as convenience. Don't think you can land 50 wires using the same terminal. Not only is it confusing, it's ugly, and it's going to break. Wire 3 comes out of the 1-2 terminal of the normally closed selector switch being held open. Wire 3 goes into the 1 terminal of the green LED, the visible alarm. Wire 2 comes out of the 2 terminal of the green LED. Wire 2 goes into the control transformer grounded X2 side. Note I'm using the terminal block to make my life easy. Rung 3 is done. Let's move on to rung 4. I've got lots of places to begin rung 4. Notably the 1-2 terminal of the normally closed selector switch being held open, the 2-3 terminal of the normally open silence push button, the 1-1 common terminal of the relay, or the 1 terminal of the green LED. Given the destination of wire 3 is going to be another relay terminal, it seems only logical, pardon the pun, to begin rung 4 at the 1-1 one, one common terminal of the control relay single pole double throw transfer contact. Wire 3 comes out of the 1-1 one, one common terminal of the control relay. Wire 3 goes right back into the 2-1 control relay terminal on the base. Any other wire 3 connection would be valid, but it'd be a waste of wire and time. Wire 5 comes out of the 2-2 two, two terminal from the normally closed side of the single pole double throw transfer contact. Wire 5 goes into the one terminal of the yellow LED, our simulated audible alarm. Wire 2 comes out of the two terminal of the yellow LED. This wire could go a number of places. However, the most sensible connection is right next door on the two terminal of the green LED. Wire 2 goes into the two terminal of the green LED. Again, there exists other valid wire 2 connections However, they'd be a waste of wire and time. That's it. Our alarm circuit is ready to rock. Notice how moving left to right, bottom to top, we never had to backtrack or run the risk of an open or short-circuited rung. Use this method and you will have a greater chance of success in less time. Don't use this method and you'll have a greater chance of failure in more time. Your choice. Before the circuit is placed into service, Make sure the selector switch is switched such that the normally closed contact is being held open. Recall the simulated float switch is normally closed, however it's being activated into its opposite open state by being triggered by a full tank. That's what the red arrow in the ladder logic diagram indicates. When the system is unlocked, plugged in, and the circuit breaker closed, the alarm circuit does a whole lot of nothing. That's the point. The simulated float switch detects a sufficient quantity of fluid in the tank and doesn't feel compelled to bring it to an operator's attention. Note that the three position selector switch is not in the deactivated center position. It is in a position that activates the normally closed contact being put to use into the open state. This is the tank full condition. If however the tank drains, i.e. the normally closed switch is no longer being held open, both the visual green alarm and the simulated audible yellow alarm indicate there's a problem. The tank is empty. Quit looking at cat pictures on the internet and do something about it. An operator alerted to the situation, yet desiring to silence the audible alarm, presses and releases the momentary contact silence push button. The relay coil is energized. The normally closed CR1B contact opens and turns off the yellow audible alarm. The normally open CR1A holding contact closes and keeps the relay coil energized. An operator can now release the push button. The alarm is still asserted, only it's not blasting in your ears. A couple more cat pictures later, the operator gets around to filling the tank. Only when the tank is filled, i.e. the normally closed switch is again held in the open state, are both the visual alarm and relay coil de-energized and the circuit returned to its start state. Our alarm circuit functions as intended. Note when the relay coil is energized, you should observe the visual indicator light light up and the electromechanical contacts change states. 
when the relay coil is de-energized, you should observe the visual indicator light go off and the electromechanical contacts return to their deactivated state. I find the characteristic electromechanical click endearing, especially when troubleshooting a relay-based system in the dark. True story that we'll unfortunately have to wait for another thrilling episode of Big Bad Tech. All right, this about wraps up our brief applications exercise. In conclusion, we built an alarm circuit using our previously constructed motor controls trainer board, including a control relay and a selector switch being held in its activated state. Cost for the setup was pretty minimal. After all, it's just a control relay, a selector switch, a push button, and two pilot lamps. Part numbers appear in the information section of this video and the orientation in the motor controls trainer kit lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. Conceivably, you could even do this same experiment without the control transformer and just use common household 120 volt AC. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.